recognize me as the personification of the plastic bag from American Beauty. That was until all this 9-11 Patriot Act, no good, double dealing, nefarious, ignominious bullshit started happening, man. You can call me Turbo. I fucking play for keeps, man, and you want to know what? Tonight? March 2nd, 2012. It's 2012 is what you're doing, aren't you? You know who the heck you're hacking with, man? Do you know who you're doing is what you're doing? I am Michael Deke. I am Michael Deke. What are you doing? That's what you're doing. Three hundred and twenty-eight of the Black Ops Illuminati operatives will inexplicably die tonight. Evildoers. Accidents. To sudden deaths. Fucking tragic. Maroon 5 and Merv Griffins like fucking... Pony Disco Ballroom, where they don't tell you that Vince McMahon is waiting with leathery aplomb. Oh, uh, Miss... Mr. Griffin. What matters here, people, is that we learn the tools that I have shown you. Now, let me find a way to speak and also see. Huh. Now Johnny Turbo Deep is fucking with the plastic bag. This is what you're doing. I wrote my notes down right here, man. Read this follow. My, what I'm about to tell you is it's not going to change the moral structure and architectonic of any individual being unless that being just so happens tonight to be on the very tipping point or leading edge between the decision between morality development, physical spiritual conscience and not care. You see, our consciousness as experienced phenomenologically as human beings is definitely, you could say, diabetic reactions to sugar and whatnot definitely illustrate that consciousness is, has a materialistic base, as far as we know, of this form. But, we have been led on to believe by people who take on the mantle and authority of the past successes of science as it freed itself in quick succession from the bullcrap of the Catholic Church of the High Middle Ages, the Inquisition and whatnot. You can't argue with Copernicus, Galileo. In those past successes and the scientific method and everything that it has got us, 
not too long ago, a cabal of material, selfish, greedy cocksuckers. And that's an insult to cocksuckers. They would have you believe that, that an answer has been had for all time as if it is a scientific law proven beyond all doubt that consciousness is strictly a phenomena of the biology of the human body and ceases with the death of that biological body. This is one of the problems of pure reason, however, and antinity. And a scientist or anybody trying to put that kind of a fucking bluff over our heads never specified that, said, Listen, man, this is what it is, and this is what it is, and this is how we're going to get what we can before the shithouse goes up in flames. And for told, for somebody who has had an experience with right or good, you know what I mean, man? The little things. And people that know the good know that it is its own reward and proof. Now, the final jury that can be verified without any further doubt, two or four or four and against, is again one of the problems of pure reason. It is something that scientific inquiry and verification can never be had. Either or, you can never prove scientifically that consciousness does or does not cease. And that is one of the underpinnings upon the human struggle of moral development. Now, moral development is like part and parcel of the idea that there is some beyond as a reward and an incentive for doing right. Now, if we do some work, studying, even, I mean, how do you say his name? Colbert, Piaget, the sixth stage of moral development. Uh, hoping for beyond and having that be the incentive upon which to carry out good and righteousness to do what is right. It's all good and fine, but it's just, uh, it's an immature, there's nothing, I'm not knocking it, I prefer that to baseless, uh, wanton, materialistic lying and uh, mongering, gluttony, exploitation, willing us to do wrong without having any care, because you believe that this is just the one big shebang, huh? or you just let your willingness to do wrong at some crucial point run them up to the point where now you're just an irredeemable person, and then you know who you're talking about. One of your buddies just like got in a car accident, the blackout, crashy, you know the people I speak to that are trying through various bills such as HR 8971. I heard that was something made up by uh, The Onion. Forget that. Or the one I just heard about and read about tonight um, with HR 4. Four, eight, zero, I don't know, but it's actually in the legislation that now, like 2013, 2014, is where the problem is going to come from sometime, isn't it? Because we're Michael Deak and we're coming in in a big way. Enjoy the lake of fire, fuckers! Fatty Arbuckle. Nope, you're not up to 57. It isn't catching you, but we're only up to 20, whatever. What were you up to? 27. 27. Mm -hmm. No, out loud. Okay. With force, like you want this thing to be fucking, come to mutual fucking, like, accord. 28. We're back. This episode of Keith Jockey Man. 
I've actually gotten this bird to say swirling anuses by the fridge 57 times in order to, for her to get what she wants from me. Crocodile hunter. Pause. What are we up to? 43. Okay, you got like what? 14 more? 14 more swirling anuses, please. Last one forceful. Okay. Gildersleeve's back with you. That was the general. You see, if one were to subscribe existentially to the use your illusion as maxim, one may saunter, as it were, into realms of experience with consciousness, wherein just such abstract personal cornball funhouse yoga talking about talking about it style uh, musings and suggestions that the general is actually kind of like if you were a teeny bopper peeing her pants when the Beatles first did their first tour and you lived in Topeka or something and you remember the last song they're like uh, or maybe you were the little sister at home and you were told the next day, oh, we saw them, the Beatles, they promised they were going to come back soon. And you were the little sister and you didn't get to see it, but you remembered those words. And uh, anyhow, down the road, if you're that girl, like, and you see Mal Evans, you know, well, well, sugar, no, we don't, but we can get some. I was pondering buying some the other day. Now, if that little sister went on to digest everything she knew about the Beatles, the little sister got to go to the concert that time, and she was too little. So she went on to know everything about the Beatles. She had all the Beatles wigs, and like knew everything about how they started and how they were found. She kind of like idolized in the stratosphere of like uh, just childhood idolization. Brian Epstein bringing the boys to the world at her own shifting favorite Beatles. She even knew who Mel Evans was. That would be a tween with years of disgruntled. I didn't get to go to the concert as a pre-tween and uh jump into like no mere tween with a knowledge of her Beatles if she knows who Mel Evans is and let's say she's walking the streets from the freaking Catholic school that she's walking to and from to get those tickets to go see Kansas City Karen came back into the picture so she's on her way, and all of a sudden, like, she sees Mel Evans, man, walking down the street. You see Mel Evans, you know that, like, the show is probably coming up <coughs> the following night, if you know what I mean. If you see Mel Evans in town. So when I say in a use your illusion as existential maxim, in the phenomenological cosmic sense, that this is Gildersleeves back with you. Of course, it was a cat and a Rubik's Cube, if you remember from the videos. From that point until now, between then I said in one point, all documented here somewhere in print or in video, that the transit, long conjectured, hoped for, from point B to point A, point A to point B, point W to point KRP in Cincinnati. So wait, if you're that girl and it's not Topeka, it's Cincinnati and you see Mel Evans, Gildersleeves, or the general as Mel Evans, then 
you know that like the long promised like return performance is at hand because as all knew them since they were boys in elementary school, grade school, childhood chum turned Beatles right hand man Mel Evans would oft times say if they were on tour going from the east to the west of America and they were in Topeka, like Mel would be in the next night's show, say Denver, like taking care of like uh, certain things to make it go smoothly when it actually does elapse. And so you see Mel Evans and you're this girl and you're like freaking out, man. Like, no way, man. And Mel, he's right hand man to the Beatles, trusted childhood friend, sees you and then he's right next to the epicenter of the storm, isn't he? And he well-versed in like, okay, if it's 50 of you tweens, different story, but it was just you, Kathleen, just you. Kathleen. Yes? Don't you see, it, it was because Mel Evans happened to walk down the street and see that excited, like, blown out of your mind, I got all the numbers on the Mega Millions and I'm waking up in a side street in a mid-level city on the edge of the super universe. Okay. Immortal. My personality survived the death of body, like, excitement look in your eye to see me. Like, I'm going to introduce you to the general. So anyhow, that was my six minute... 29 second explanation of the preceding video. I believe it was called the Salvation Dharmi. Any Salvation Dharmi, besides the obvious weapon, would come equipped with weapons, such as the weapon, the song by Rush. We got nothing to fear but fear itself, nothing, not failure, not fatal tragedy. Not the faulty units in this mad machinery. Fucking Rubik's Cubes can be used as a tool. They can be used by a tool as a tool. You got your run of the mill freaking pin if you want to prick someone. Pitchfork like shish kebab with the pointers. Fucking fangs, like fucking those ninja claw things, the ninja stars, man, flamethrowers, hammers, nunchucks, fucking video, the pen, the sword is over there, I don't feel like reaching to get it, the uh, Gilder Sleevesley and Archangelic supercomputer just put your right thumb between the flowers and bing you might notice a slight metabolic change toy lightsabers which we will bring and have brung to every Armageddon <laughs> since well before the Big Bang and were the winners clearly before it was even again By Bick, driven balls deep. And by the Barbara Walters 2017 10 Most Fascinating People of 2017. I'm Barbara Walters and we're up to number five now. 2017's fifth most fascinating personality. As was the 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, and 6th. Proceeding personalities. They're all Gary Alter Jr. Gary Alter Jr. is the fifth most fascinating personality of 2017. Vic. Oh, Barbara. You didn't have to call me Vic, but like how enthralled I am. That's the first thing I've seen you do in decades. Would you and the viewing audience agree that like you truly felt an emotion right there? of excited jubilee. Unlike when, say, you're on The View and you're talking about some horrible school shooting 
with the girls who look genuinely uh, grievously upset in mind and well you look frustrated that you're not even capable on this live broadcast of even feigning emotional identification uh -huh. <laughs> thanks for calling me Vic Barb I'm number five and I'm alive tell us Vic Bronson when was it in the Bronson night that you just learned what you know well Vic excuse me since I've become world historical and it seemed like a freaky flash in the pan celebrity of sorts through videos such as this uh, freaky anti-humor ruminations taken to the utmost degree intermixed with the what seems to be Gordian not solving of the impact of consciousness and ethics You'll be able to do your own homework soon on that point. What the fuck? Barbara! Did you just say what the boop fuck? Boop fucking A, right? I did. That's fucking boop horseshit, man. How boop the fuck could you have said that? Boop shit, they're not censoring it. Eat, bite, fuck, suck, double nibble, chew, Vic. Spoken like a true smartass. Now, Barbara, how far do we have to dig deeper in order for you to joyously, happily, without any further pain or struggle, admit that you may have been the one alluded to in the movie To Die For when Nicole Kidman's character based on the Ice Princess, whoa, of the early 90s, is cheating on her husband on her wedding night, like talking to this fucking old jaded, like veteran journalist. What is it? Oh, I thought you said she takes out the holiday. When the old grizzled, like veteran news reporter is like regaling the dinner party that's the cheating on her wedding night, character Ice Princess is engaging him. He's like, let me tell you something. I truly believe that your brother Gare is a lizard. And you won't know a thing till you get inside. And Kansas City Karen gets back into your picture. So anyhow, that was the general. I'm Gildersleeve. And um, I just wanted to say Thank you to all the well-wishers for the friendly pipings in and I think even a few monocades, a few monocolides and fucking happy birthday wishes for freaking... The reason I decided like three hours ago, Steph... Or, I mean, Stephen Tinson, daughter. We just vocally confirmed to the viewers for posterity that I did, in fact, babble nonstop for like two and a half, maybe hours, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. You probably don't remember at the beginning of that, the original intent was to get up and like get my copy of Paramedic of Souls Volume 3, Charlie McCoy, to illustrate. Monsters? Hold on, the monsters. Did I not speak that long ago? The whole intent was to get this book to do this video. And the whole reason that I hit roll began hours ago. That was before the Latisse and the Float Anywhere photographic display, right? And the Church of Balls store that we're going to build in the parking lot of Nasty Bees and have that wacky commercial with like 20 straight seconds, a whole previous commercial of dead air that makes people like, what's wrong with the TV? Pop into it, 
church of balls. And you soon discover that we sell magic three balls, crystal balls, diamond balls, brass balls, certificates to balls, books this thick about the philosophy of balls. As an aside, we also are you don't have to work tomorrow, do you? the greater Monroe. I don't have to work for seven days. Uh, let me tell you my vacation day out. I've never tried anything like this before. And then we'll get back to the Church of Balls. And the reason I did this was to uh, was an original uh, video whose intent was to express kind of dutifully, kind of sentimentally, kind of like who even Would knows what the motive was. The at convey the I sense of how lucky today. I am. I thought I can hang out. We can hang out. Sure. Anyhow, originally I was talking to her with my hands draped around the bass guitar, talking about something, dude. Way off the Richter scale. We're talking about like avatars, like. Pepper grinders, Hi. fucking grinding like fucking Hi. heavenly blue morning glory speed for the dancing in the vision quest like dirty? fucking I poison snake. The no. poison snake in the night song. Anyhow, it was then that I originally felt kind of really lucky as a human being. I mean, what, with videos like this? Like fucking, are you kidding me? It's a nice camera. It's a good camera. And how, like, my existential yeah. ponderings and consciousness, far apart from the means, the word. Okay. What? This? Yeah. No, this is a cheapo, like, you could get this at, like, a Rite Aid, man. These are, like, almost disposable. How much is that? How much is this? Yeah. I don't know, because it was a present, but, like, I've seen them at, like, Rite Aids and CVS's for, like, fucking 20 bucks. Kodak makes one of those like that and you can go I had one man, I fucking lost it. Like a Kodak like that? Yeah, high def man and fucking like waterproof one? Yes. I don't think I did have the waterproof one. They I got may one of those for that. sale at pawn shop in the room. Fucking I just wanna see what's in the fucking thing. Can we smoke a joint? The chip that had the memory in it, like, had fucking, like, had, like 12 smoke, videos from when, that. like, fucking, she used to play guitar in our band, Heather's cat, was staying with me. It went through a week where it was, like, in heat and caterwauling, man. I had fucking videos of, like, it in two of the videos, like, and, like, fucking, clearly the cat is now fucking, like, in heat caterwauling work. What pawn shop? Uh, Mark Oxford Trading. Oxford Trading Post. <coughs> Lighter. Lighter. Somebody has to come to my rescue. Ah, I need yeah, to at thirty-five dollars. Back with Barbara Walters, ten most. Fascinating people of 2017. Oh my god. Our ninth personality, Gary Douglas no, Archer Jr. Guys apart right on one day. Cut the Gordian well, knot, solve the hemlock oh, monlock. Yeah, messed with Texas by just saying the Alamo without you remember. Is it 50? Is there 50 hours of work? Uh, probably. Who's, who am I working for? Me, for oh, anyhow, he's paying you. the existential yeah. pondering, the concept of luck, not insurance. the concept, that's what I'm trying to say, people, the problems come please? from, with a couple yeah. of these problems, which is why oh, I went to fetch this book and make this yes. appreciation thank you video, instead of just clicking yeah. like it. No beers left, huh? Fucking... It must be my desire, actually yeah. believing that there's one laying broken. around somewhere. What? This car broken. I can hardly afford this fucking thing. 
super peppercinis, man, as disguise Higgs boson solution is what we need to get into this situation, man. I will hunt the world as the fourth most fascinating personality. Not to mention the 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th, 4th, duh. 3rd, 2nd, and finally 1st of Barbara Walters 2017's Most Fascinating Personality. Fucking... I can't oh, believe... Man, you smoked the last one? Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? Can I have some of that? Sure. For number 5, Vic... You're unsure of yourself, Barbara. What are you saying, man, Jerry? I think what Barbara's saying is that... Who, Barbara Walters? A bird in the hand may be better than two in the bush, but a finger in the bush is better than a fucking flock of seagulls, baby! What? Michael. Absolute spirit proto scene by scene synopsis. My name is Gildersleeves. It used to be Jerk Jeerden, but about a year ago, something went like I had to really go out of my way for it. Fucked up my credit, man. But it was, it was whacked out, man. There was these two kids, like, on drugs or something that came screaming up to my drummer. Uh, what's her name? Uh, whatever that says is her name. So anyhow. They're tripping balls or something. They're like, we just saw a car run over a cat. She's like suddenly ready to cry her eyes out. I'm like, oh, here we go. Things like these happen. We've got certain abilities. Completely calm, expedient almost. Here is the Jeet Kune Do of figuring this shit out. You saw it that way, blah, 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 blah. I could see the... Colorblind glow of its eyes under a porch. <clears throat> All of a sudden, Jonel is like the cat, like Kirandera. She's like, oh, get stay here, I know, cat. She can't get to it. She's doing all of her, like, come on. <laughs> the thing darts out real fast. The two boys can't catch it. It's clearly got two broken hind legs. Terrified. And once again, in the three other previous, like, this is the moment to bring it kind of thing, couldn't have been more of a sort of 
snap reaction, kind of like uh, Fibonacci curvature and perfect uh, getting the cat before it gets too far into the road with its two broken legs. Took it to the vet, they were rolling their eyes like, we should just put it to sleep. I'm like, nah, I'll pay for it. Fucking cat ended up being a dick, but that night, oh wow, cool. Once again, this is take two for a proto mystery epic, the absolute spirit. I am trying to do my best to uh, Im improvise the opening soliloquy with the main character, Gildersleeves, explaining this shit. So, I paid for the cat to live, and uh, the vet. Use the doubt as well atop that building right there. Anyhow, that night, the Archangel Michael appeared to me on a flaming marshmallow, self unsolving Rubik's Cube. Yeah, up until that point, I was jerk jeered in. A lot of wild ideas and like those radical, like, uh, moments of crisis, bring it, man. Uh, inexplicable awesome stories all of a sudden I remembered you know I work for the Archangel Michael and before I became Jerk Jeerden born in 1976 uh, imagine an allied paratrooper just after D-Day uh, or bef sometime before D-Day like parachuting into occupied. Oh wow! I hope that picks up a real bitchin' chemtrail blocking the moon, as if to say, you can't stop us. So anyhow, back to me pre being the mortal me that's holding this fictional soliloquy that I'm improvising. That's when I remembered that. I paratrooped into occupied territory into my mother's, my human mother's womb. Had all these talents and abilities and uh, at a certain point wicked chemtrails, man. All right, absolute spirit take to the opening soliloquy. Keith Donkey realizes that he really is Gildersleeves, the Lando Lake chick. Hey. The Lando. You're obsessed with the Lando Lake chick, huh? I'm obsessed with her return of Christ, perfect tits and chest. Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry, how are you guys? Good. How are we? How you doing, Gary? I'm all right. How are you? Good. Good? Good. Very good. Very well. Still on the wellness wagon? Yeah. Uh, trying to be. Fishing. Have you seen my fishing video that I found this morning that I posted? Mm -hmm. You posted a fishing video? Well, no. I found this kid's video and it had like one of the tunes that almost came on twice. I'm getting At the party last night? Yeah. After writing this thing, blabbing my mouth off about, like, fucking casting off the fear of death and, like, fucking dying if necessary, like, the five of, like, tyrannical cocksuckers. I found this too, and it was, like, perfect. And it was a fishing video. That's weird. Put some comments, like, man, I was just, uh, freaked out from my last day at work. And then I found this shit, a fishing video. That's weird. Not as weird as... Weirder than weird.
There's the win. By the way, this is take three of the movie idea I began filming on my walk home from work. The Absolute Spirit. Scene one was a character named Gildersleeves in the opening film Soliloquy. Explains his encounter with saving a cat. The Archangel Michael. The wind. Which, oddly enough, there she goes again. The Midnight Rambler Creeps. The craziest life trauma. Okay, we'll try again. And what just happened, which I must like, <laughs> in this video segment, detail as fictionally as I can. Is the identity of, uh, wow, that was creepy. the uh still rolling in this fucking video the odd like awesome synchronicities that took place such as the taxi that got me here just as um I stepped out of the taxi thinking that my wallet to pay the bill to get here real quick was in the scrub pants pockets in the back that I don't have so I'm like taxi driver I'm not getting fresh with you Freaking, I have my wallet to pay you with in these hospital scrub pockets underneath these denim jeans. Like, oh, okay, fine. I unbuckle the belt, like, reach deep behind the denim and realize I, I can now feel that the wallet is clearly in the denim outside pants. And, oh, yeah, these are the new scrubs I just bought that don't have a back pocket. <laughs> weird because you just stuck your hand in your pocket to get your wallet like you've done forever. You always put it in your left pocket. Like for a minute straight. So you pull out the shit, get guys cab fare. Have a good night. Clean up his car. Get that ghost thing that you keep telling everybody is a, a Michael the Archangel thing. Unbeknownst to you, like, um, the story you, like, made up last year about the cat, which is now the opening soliloquy of this piece, <clears throat> it was the blue-rosed angelic supercomputers that you had no idea, like, happened to be in the pocket tonight, just now, and it was like, I gave one to my mom, I was like... If you have a problem of urgency, like, just put your right thumb between the three roses. Like, she called me, like, hours later from the casino. I won $700! And it kind of had a nice effect. A little kind of like that old device in cartoon storytelling about, uh... How come I can fly without the ring? 
because I gave you the ring to make you believe that it was it, but you could always fly. Kind of a fact on people. I mean, it's wicked awesome that my mom was like, yeah, it's fucking horseshit, but then admitted through a text the same day, she won $700. Woo, yeah. That was in my pocket after, like, fucking the previous film, or video file in this very outlandish file that I'm now uh, botching into talking about botching it uh. has my uh, Gildersleeve's character uh, facsimile of what will be the opening soliloquy to the movie and yeah it talks about the Archangel Michael it talks about like fucking everything get fucking here in the cab like fucking step out of the car and that blue Michael Angelic supercomputer the fucking ghost thing that I bought that like I'm telling people now with the blue light eyes like pew, pew, pew. oh yes uh, this is our way for the uh, 15 year 17 year like uh, F uh, period from the advent of the second coming until like Jesus has met every human being that's still on the earth there's gonna be uh a holding period. It's going to take about 17 years. And I'm like telling people today. Like, oh hey, let me just... Uh, they see that bright blue light. That falls out at the same time on the ground. The Archangel supercomputer. Blue rose ones. They're like, those are always the ones. <clears throat> I'll explain in a later scene for people that are watching this that aren't putting their shit together. As I get out of the fucking car... Cab rolls away. There is a RPD patrol car at the end of Greenleaf with a spotlight trained in my direction at that specific moment. I pick up the fucking Archangel supercomputer, the scary ghost like scanner, and uh, uh, you'll understand infinities from now when you arrive at Galactic Park, the super universe, and uh, a lot of different, like, secret paths that you could go on if you just, like, let me scan you with this thing that, uh, you can clearly go to Barnes & Noble's bookstore at the U of R and see that there's ghosts, like, lighting up eyes, cows, but it's just got a nice effect, and the blue lights, bzz, 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 the fucking police are creeping me out. In the next story, or in the next video, I will, like, somehow, uh, sheath, uh, the clincher of clinchers that just took place for me. It was creepy, it was exhilarating, and it couldn't be more perfect for, like, tonight's new fucking project, The Absolute Spirit. And, as I'm beginning the other video, what you couldn't see when, um... I was shining down because there was no lighting was that in the concrete it said starship and I'm like okay man is this shit coming together or what almost to Megan Jay's uh, walking past the thing I'm like what does it say on the other side of that fucking slab of sidewalk does it say dad and I'm like no it says D so D starship and it's just occurring to me now like fucking tattoo. The plane! The plane! <laughs> fucking, it's actually there on, um, what's that side street that hooks up with, uh, Tap and Mal, uh, Gregory Street, whatever it is by the house of Hamez, on the right-hand side adjacent to the parking lot of Tap and Mal, it is a sidewalk slab that has starshine, or it, starshine. Starship, who I can't even remember now. That's gonna have to be in a future scene. The starship. The starship. Okay, this fucking freaky deaky off the cuff tale is about the starship. <laughs> and uh Jesus when the when the Midnight Rambler called, I was uh looking at this seashell at Meg and Jay's house. And I, like, was so, like, what the heck? Is this a prank that I'm about to experience? Fully detailed in the next video to put this weirdo creep <clears throat> beginnings to the 
prequel to the most outlandish movie of all time, Super Movie the Movie. This is like the shit that kind of attaches these zombie piece of shit with bad news bears, bad attitude. Like, you're going to turn out to be fucking loser zombie bowling team, the gutter balls that have, like, magical, like, Harlem Globetrotter bowling weirdo skills that are searching for a pair of, like, magical bowling shoes. And the Lando Lake story, second coming, uh, first contact story that I told Mag earlier tonight and then told the Midnight Rambler out creeping him for a bit and then fucking whoo I can't even tell going outside seeing the two fucking rings around the moon and of course fucking <clears throat> being a little creeped out that um the fucking thing meant to block the window from the living room to the front porch, although the window having been fixed and uh, it tipped downward when I got in today. And uh, what else? What else? What else? It's straight ahead. Fucking 1983 merman I should turn to be. Well, it's too bad. No, 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 no. Starship, and it kind of looks like a freaking seashell with that Fibonacci, like fucking awesomeness. That Alfred, and they had parties in my face for it. They also say it would be on the will of God for a man to live and breathe underwater. But man, sure wish I had that Kodak fucking high def cam because like this is a far out like freaky deaky short film prequel to the greatest movie you're ever going to see that will eventually be made and the grace of the king and it's like okay End of video 1240.